So um, someone I know from the group um, has asked me about, I read a passage from Nisargata Maharaj, the enlightened teacher from his, I think from one of his books and read a, read a passage to me and asked me to, ask me about it. Um, uh, if I remember correctly, the teacher, uh, Nisargata said to the student, uh, you are that. Uh, and uh, you just need to trust and believe that, and um, and that was it. I mean, it was much more. He said much more, you know, non-dual languaging. But there was a, you know, there was talk of trust and uh, and belief, and uh, you are that. Now, okay, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna share this. Uh, this is obviously this doesn't make sense at the level of enlightenment. You don't need to know any of this. But if you're not enlightened, then there is something called the grace of the guru, the grace of the guru, So, um, you know, which, I've, which I have experienced. And, 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 I've, and I've had my teacher, Hawkins, and another teacher. I know, uh, I know what, what, what they're implicating and what's happening there. It's, it's, quite, um, it's quite dense. So, so I'm going to I'm going to just sort of talk about le, um, at enlightenment and levels of consciousness, and the grace and and the grace of the guru, the grace of being in the presence of an enlightened teacher, and uh, the teacher saying to the student, "You are that. Just believe and have faith." Different to if you read it in a book or someone who's not that says to you, "You are that," which is different. And why is it different? And and to uh, and to sort of explain myself in the world of duality of what is the grace of the guru and the guru, I mean, when I say guru, that which is beyond form, uh, the words seem to appear uh, uh, to the student, you are that. Uh, so now there's a difference between someone who's, who is that saying to you, you are that, and someone who's not that saying to you, you are that. So actually what's happening here is beyond the, is actually beyond the head. You know, people tend to think from the head and thought. And, uh, you know, like the guru just said something which was really clever. And the student, you know, and, and the student will in intellectually understand what was said. And uh, and and uh, so all that, you know, so if someone, if I just, someone, I just get somebody, hey, you on the street, just say to me, I am that, and that should do it for me. Uh no, that's not what, for me what happens when an enlightened guru says you are that, uh, and when someone who's not that says you are that. So uh, I'll explain it in, in uh, uh, so for someone who is that, or uh, it can be, you could say who's not that, but is temporarily near that, or, or whatever it is, saying you are that, which is uh, also quite powerful even if they drop off, you know, they're in and out of that. Um, but uh, but enlightened teacher is always that. Uh, I think I'm going to sound cryptic to people watching this video, but never mind. Um, and uh, you are that which is beyond thought, beyond body, beyond this world, beyond it all, beyond all transitory, this and that. And what is speaking is not a body or a thoughts or coming from thoughts or anything. It's not a, it's not a personality. It is not that. Even though it seems to the to the student um, that words are used from a personal entity, it's not from it's from it's from the infinite that these words come. Now, in the presence of of I, I, just classically, it's called the grace of the guru. That's why I use the words. Um, in the presence of a guru saying you are that, what's actually happening is that the the field, the non dual field, the infinite field, is so powerful that um, the students, you know, start to get, um, um, are lifted, you know, after use languaging, uh, beyond their usual ego state, and often have an opportunity in the field of the teacher, even though there is no teacher there, but there is, let's call it an infinite field is there. And the student may hear the words, you are that. But actually, I mean, I know what's being talked about, in the field of enlightened teachers saying you are that, um, there suddenly it's like the the usual level of identification with the thinking head 
and the body is already quite impaired. So one is the, stu it, the seeming student is already quite elevated. And the, the teacher just says, you are that, you know, and uh, I've, I've seen it happen with my t teacher Hawkins, not to me directly, but to other students. He'll just say to me, you are that, just, uh, it's there, just, uh, just below, just, it's there, it's, you are that. And what, what is he doing? Is he trying to talk to them and getting them to understand? No, he's not trying to talk to them and get them to understand. But in the presence of the teacher, I mean, the whole space is so elevated that a lot of the students can get, uh, they feel, because the ego is no longer hardly identified and the story is very weak, they suddenly get the experience of that. Well, what is that? It's not an intellectual thing. They get the experience of the infinite, that silence. Um, as St. Francis says, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. Why isn't everyone experiencing that? Well, they're heavily identified with the thoughts and body. And uh, yeah, and and why if you just why if someone reads a book from him and they say, You're just reading in your head, I am that. Well, I should be that then, shouldn't I? I just need to believe it and have faith. Well, it's different. You know, if you read it in a book and you have a teacher say that, and you in the the capacity to realize that, and what I'm talking about, the non-dual field, the silence the infinite stillness that is here before all life and death as we perceive it, that that is that is glimpsed to the student. And that is an extreme awakening, because once glimpsed, that which is beyond form and thoughts and thinking, um, then uh, obviously a faith and a knowingness, a deeper knowingness comes that, uh, or at least a, a greater glimpse to the student comes that that is what I am. It's true. There's an inner spiritual recognition that that is the absolute truth and uh you know so it's not it's not an intellectual thing i'm just like it will explain the words you know what what it, what does what does a, a guru mean saying you are that and do i need to do i need to understand it in my head uh no you're not going to understand it in your head but you need to get you know i just say to anyone who's glimpsed that you know, you'll know if you've glimpsed that that infinite state or the beingness or that which is beyond thought bodies uh timeless presence beyond this world i i, I actually feel most many people glimpsed it for a little while even though their ego comes in and says you didn't and it was and that you know maybe it was that park or maybe it was that woman or something it wasn't that park or that woman but anyway uh they glimpse that and then the teacher says you are that and then there's a knowingness that I am that, and that is, you know, that that is my heritage, not to be stuck in thoughts. Is it? Do I need a? Do I need a? Is that my phone? Where's my phone? Uh, so oh, I should I should carry on the video. So so that that's what's happening. There's a grace. It doesn't really matter. What, I mean, the teacher is the teacher knows that in the presence, you know, in that group and in front, with that teacher. When you say you are that, and um, you know, I mean, I, I don't claim enlightenment, but uh, when I'm in a strong presence, uh, sometimes uh, people can glimpse that presence, you know, or at least where I am at, and uh, that's the grace. It's not an intellectual. It's not understanding it. It's not the book. It's it's the the, the field um, dissolves. If you go, go to groups with people who are very strongly near there or in that then you know the capacity to recognize recognize the infinite is not an intellectual thing becomes that you know then someone in a group may say or a teacher may say you are that and the recognition of that so it's got nothing i mean you know you can read i mean lots of people have read books on enlightenment um i haven't seen that many that have become enlightenment uh, enlightened but yes there are stories uh, very famous stories of enlightened teachers who spent it three years with their guru uh, and suddenly became enlightened of course you would spend three years with someone who's in a field of enlightenment or even if you get into a group where everyone is practicing that and do that every day until it becomes intense uh, then th suddenly it become oh i'm that i'm that it's not about understanding that and then the passion to burn everything off that stands in the way of that will come so that is my thing. I mean, it's like at a certain point, reading books 
you don't need to read the books but it's a good point what if you read an enlightened teacher saying you are that um you know i i know what's happening there and i've had i've had uh, my teacher do it to people and uh, and i know what he's doing it's like you're blissed out almost in the presence of the teacher so your thoughts are hardly there and then he goes you are that you know you're just just under your thinking you're that and you know and uh, they have a high probability of recognizing the infinite and knowing that is the truth it's safe to let go of the head to try and understand that that that's that's not the point anyway uh, i'll stop